I got it, I got it. Jeez. to begin the services for Mr. George J. Kerman. We want to welcome people that are online as well as the folks that have gathered here at the cemetery. Just a gentle reminder, if you are present here at the cemetery, if you have a cell phone with you, to please place it in the silent mode or turn it off completely. That would be appreciated. The services will be conducted by Cantor Howard Friedland. Shalom, peace to everyone. Welcome to all those who are here, all those who are watching uh, from afar. Um, we begin our service with uh, Kriya, the tearing of the ribbon as we wear today. Kriya is an ancient ceremony. Uh, we're first told in our tradition that uh, when Jacob, our ancestor, heard of the supposed news of his uh, son's death, Joseph, he was so overcome with grief that he tore his garments. And some people today even will tear a shirt or tear a jacket or tear a part of a dress. We symbolically today uh, tear a ribbon. And uh, it's traditional to wear it for the period of Shiva for seven days. Some wear it for the period of Shloshim, 30, first 30 days. Uh, some wear it beyond. It's a sign, an outward sign to everyone you come in contact with that there's a tear in your heart. Uh, and that God willing in the, the days and weeks and months to follow that that will that will heal uh, it, it never fully goes away there will always be a void of course um, missing George uh, but that you'll be able to come back into the world so I will ask all of you now who are wearing a, a Kriya ribbon to please rise and the first uh, I'll say the blessing Baruch Atah Donai Lohinu Melech HaOlam Dayan HaEmet Blessed are you Adonai our God who is the true judge Adonai Natan God has given, God has taken away. Blessed be God's name. And so we've come together as a family and as a community to express our sacred sorrow. We have come together to draw strength from one another and from the ultimate source of all strength. We have come to express our deepest sorrow in the face of deepest loss. And we have come together to say goodbye to George Kerman. We are currently celebrating the Jewish calendar, uh, the holiday of Hanukkah. And, uh, Hanukkah, the history of, Hanuk of Hanukkah is, is complicated. It, it really was the rededication of the temple after the war with the, the Seleucids, uh, 168 uh, BCE. And it was really, uh, it, uh, eight days were allotted to celebrate Hanukkah because we had not been able to celebrate Sukkot uh, earlier on in the year. So it was really sort of the delayed celebration of Sukkot. Um, the history of Hanukkah, as I said, is complicated. It became uh, a, a civil war, really, against Jews, uh, for Jews who were very, very traditional, and some Jews who had adopted Greek ways. But it sort of, as, as holidays and customs do over the years, uh, morphed into a celebration of light during the darkness. And um, it was not lost on me today how, how dreary it's been the last few days, and, and what a beautiful day it is today. Um, it doesn't make your loss any less, of course. This is still a dark day for those of you who have lost George, who loved him. 
Um, but this day gives us just a little bit of light, just a, a sliver of light and, and of hope for for the family and for all of you who who have lost George and and have a have a hole in your heart today. Um, so I hope that this light that's let in leads you to the light in in several days, months, weeks. As it is said, thus says the source of hope, I will respond to your yearning. When you call out to me in the night, I will answer. I will be with you even in the darkest of places. I will give you strength. I will nourish you and you shall know protection beneath the shelter of my wings. I extend condolences to George's family, to his wife of technically 51 years, married but 53 years together, Barbara, uh, to his daughter Paula, husband, Dennis, to his grandchildren, Dina and Joshua, to his brother, Bernie, his wife, Iris, to nieces and nephews, Jay Elliott, Susan Savage, and Bonnie Kerman, and indeed to all of you who are here and all of you who are watching from afar, uh, who love George and who miss him dearly now. We pray for wholeness and compassion in the days to come. Let's say, okay. the 23rd Psalm. Mismal de David, Adonai rohi lo haksar, Binot da shayar bitseni, together the translation of the 23rd Psalm found in your pamphlet. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. 
Psalm 121, Esai Nayel My eyes look into the void from where will my help come? My help comes from my very source, the fashioner of order and harmony. Your guardian will catch you when you slip, your shelter will protect you while you sleep. Your night will not last forever, for your protector will surely bring back the sun in the morning. Your source will watch over you at all times, and as you came into this world swaddled in loving embrace, so shall you leave. Birth is a beginning, and death a destination, and life is a journey. From childhood to maturity and youth to age, from innocence to awareness and ignorance to knowing, from foolishness to discretion and then perhaps to wisdom, from weakness to strength or strength to weakness and often back again, from health to sickness and back, we pray to health again. From offense to forgiveness, from loneliness to love, from joy to gratitude, from pain to compassion and grief to understanding, from fear to faith, from defeat to defeat to defeat until looking backward or ahead, we see that victory lies not at some high place along the way, but in having made the journey stage by stage, a sacred pilgrimage. Birth is a beginning and death a destination, but life is a journey, a sacred pilgrimage. The Torah is the sacred book of the Jewish people, and it is some parts history, some parts myth. It contains the laws that the Jews have followed uh, to a greater or less extent uh, through the years. And it also has characters in it who can either show us how to live a great life, an exemplary, or who show us how not to live. And often those characteristics are found in the same person. Um, as we all are, I think that's the genius of Torah, is that, uh, that uh, its characters are human, as we are, with strengths and weaknesses and frailties, just trying to do the best that we can. Everyone's life shows us a way to live, and certainly George's life was exemplary in showing us how to live. And I always think that uh, if we come to a service like this, we should leave in a little different mindset than when we came, having known uh, the person who was moralized and, and gleaning from their lives a way to live ours better. Uh, and so today, uh, we'll hear from people who uh, know George well. Uh, I first want to call upon his uh, son-in-law, Dennis, uh, who will speak for both uh, his wife, Paula, George's daughter, and for himself, Dennis. about how young my mom was when she lost her parents and her loss caused me pain. I remember reaching two milestone birthdays and feeling a sense of relief that I still had both my mom and my dad. I realize that now at 45 years old, I am blessed. My parents have been by my side for the most important moments of my life, but it could be 20 years from now and it still would be too soon to let my dad go. I'm not ready for this. The following few lines are not my words. They are from a Father's Day card I gave my dad recently, but they may, ha may as well have been written by me. Dad, if you ever find yourself wondering if I still need you the way I did when I was growing up, or if I ever think about the little things and special times we used to share, the answer will always be yes, Dad, because no matter how many years go by, inside my heart will always be the little girl who loves and needs her dad. I have admired my dad every day of my life. I envied his lifelong friendships, 
His life was filled with experiences and stories, and he remembered every detail. I laughed at his jokes and famous one-liners. I found comfort in his hugs and kisses and knew how lucky I was to have a dad who found it so easy to express how much he loved me, my mom, and then my husband and his two beautiful grandchildren. Watching him hold and snuggle and play with and root for Dina and Josh was the greatest gift. He beamed at every dance recital and cheered at so many hockey games. I know he'll be remembered and always cherished by his oldest, dearest friends from South Shore and Ojibwa, his Stevenson Patriots, former co-workers, my childhood friends, our hockey friends, and Dennis's entire family because my dad is unforgettable. We can all learn a lesson from him. He made everyone he met feel special. He was loyal, sweet, fair, and happy. I respect him. I adore him. I'm so proud to be his daughter. And mom, I hope you know that I saw and I learned from your relationship how important it is to hold on tight and to support and to encourage and to celebrate your partner every precious moment you can. You cared for him this past year with so much devotion and compassion and strength and love. Dad, you gave me the world. I will love you forever. I miss you. I will see you again. Thank you for being my hero. I love you, Daddy. I remember the summer I met George. It was 1996 and Paul and I were working at a summer camp down the street from Ojibwa. We had just started hanging out and she was so excited to see her dad who was on his annual trip to Ojibwa with his camp friends. Paul and I were talking and I don't think she knew when exactly he was coming over to see her, but Paula saw him walk into camp and mid-sentence took off sprinting to her dad and threw herself into his arms talking. After they embraced, they started to walk towards me hand in hand. Right away, I took notice of this. This affection between Paula and her dad was genuine and true love. It's also to this day, the only time I've seen Paula sprint, and it makes absolute sense that it was to her dad. Within a minute, he amazed me with his knowledge of sports, especially high school. He even remembered reading some stuff about me in the local newspaper, and we had a connection. I knew right away this guy was one of a kind. But to all of you that knew George, this comes as no surprise. I'm sure many of you had similar experiences when you met him. And this is who he was. I never heard him talk negatively or be mean to anyone. He was genuine and he was hilarious. His imitations, his stories, including his most famous Cassie Russell one, his constant one-liners, who, you an owl? Where, where, you need a compass? What, your light bulb? It never ended. He had the quickest wit of anyone I've ever known. He always had a line or phrase for anybody he encountered. And even in the hospital when he was incredibly weak, he'd be doing those same things with the nurses. Making them laugh, making them feel special, making a connection, that was George. He was a simple guy. <clears throat> his annual vacations were to Eagle River with his camp friends. He often told me about his favorite memories, just sitting on a pontoon boat, smoking a stogie, and as he would say, kibitzing with the guys. He told me, Duke, it's just the best. Paula never heard him swear, but I did. Really only on two occasions. The first was when I took a road trip to Des Moines, Iowa with Bernie and one of their camp friends. George drove us there, speed limit 65 miles per hour, and he drove 63 to 65 miles per hour the whole way. He always used to say to me, Duke, no speeding and no tailgating, and he lived by those words. Anyways, I heard a few swear words thrown around that weekend and I was honored to hear them. The only other times were when he was referring to his computer, that effing piece of crap. Like all of ours, from time to time, his computer would act up and he obviously didn't like that. 
and I'm sure it had nothing to do with his visiting obscure and illegal websites. Not for what you're thinking, but to illegally stream Drake basketball games because you can't watch them on TV. He refused to get cable and it wasn't about the money. He said to me, Ace, do you think I'd ever go to bed if I had cable? And that's probably true. However, I was very proud of him. After the FBI shut down the streaming sites, he signed up for an ESPN Plus account to continue to watch his beloved Bulldogs. I learned so much from him over the years, like a chocolate shake should be made with vanilla ice cream and chocolate syrup. He also taught me how to stay warm at high school football games because rain or shine, he was going to attend those Stevenson Patriot games. 30 degrees, snow, rain, wind, George was there. He would say, layers, Duke, that's the key. You gotta wear layers. Two pairs of socks and a hood. You need a hood. And of course, a newspaper. Why a newspaper? To sit on, to keep your ass from freezing on those cold metal benches. I thought he was nuts, but it absolutely works. We did have our differences, like which type of french fry was the best, or he incorrectly felt this meat on a slab of ribs, specifically Carson's, should never fall off the bone. You should have to work at it. And there was also the time I thought he was going to disown me when he learned, God forbid, I like to put some ketchup on my hot dog. Even though I'm poking a little fun, I truly don't have the words to fully describe George and just what an amazing person he was and what he meant to me. He didn't care about material things. He had Barb and Paula and then Dina and Josh, and that's all he needed. He was my biggest fan, supported, encouraged, and celebrated me like I was his son. What I wouldn't do just to have watch one more game with him, even if I didn't have the comics section under my ass. Paula, I'm in awe of the way you and your mom cared for your dad and everything you guys did for him. Nobody has ever left this earth more loved than him. It was my absolute honor to be there and help in any way I could. You both are amazing and tough and strong and I love you with all my heart. I don't think there's ever been a couple that had more love, respect and honor for each other than Barb and George. Even in the darkest moments when he could barely speak, I still heard him whisper, thank you princess, many, many times. And through the years, I've watched Barb love and honor her husband in so many ways. Paula and I see that and have learned from that. In the past week, I found out George's favorite Sinatra song was Night and Day. Even though I became a Sinatra fan, thanks to him, I didn't know this song. So I looked up the lyrics. It's also in the program. <clears throat> I think we know who it's about. I don't think it's his Rocky Road ice cream. Night and Day, you are the one. Only you beneath the moon or under the sun, whether near to me or far, it's no matter, darling, where you are, I think of you night and day. In closing, in my opinion, instead of going home tonight and having a drink in George's honor, I suggest the following. If you truly want to honor George, on your way home, on your way home, get a hot dog, no ketchup, and fries, and finish it with a chocolate milkshake, one with vanilla ice cream and chocolate syrup. He was the absolute best, and man, do I miss him. Thank you. Thank you, Dennis. Thank you, Paula. You know, I have to say that my, uh, my own son played hockey when he was a kid. He's about 23 years old now. And I had never played hockey before. And I sat for all those years on the cold bleachers, not knowing George's method of of staying warm, if I only knew and had a newspaper <laughs> beneath my tuchus. So George was born in Chicago, April 18th, 1945. He grew up in South Shore. Uh, and actually he, he and Barbara had seen each other first when he was about 13 years old. He was with his brother and uh, you were about 11. And uh, you knew at that time that something's gonna happen, right? That, that one of your girlfriends said, I think you're gonna, you're gonna get together. And it was Bashert, and you did. How many years later, when, uh, when you were 21, he was 23. And um, uh, George went to school at O'Keefe School, South Shore High School, where he graduated. Uh, then he went off to Drake University, go Bulldogs. Uh, he was a big, big fan, as, uh, as Dennis uh, had said. Um, one thing that 
that Barbara had told me was that uh, that she knew when she and George were young that they would be together because they shared the same friends, they they shared the same places, they just had so many things in common. Of course, a running theme of George's and always young life, but but throughout his adult life was Camp Ojibwe, uh, where he made many friends. He was a he was a camper. You know, he started, I think, at age eleven. He was a counselor. He was elected chief. Um, so that was a great uh, a great memory that he had, and and he got to share that with Josh, who, who then attended Ojibwe, and uh, and has a has a connection, and as Dennis said that. that that he and Paula worked at a camp that was very near there. And one of the reasons, Paula, I think you said that you, you wanted to work at that camp was to sort of share uh, by association in, in your dad's experience. Uh, George also belonged to the, the Meyer 11 chapter of the AZA, American Zionist Association, uh, when he was in high school, fraternity, and sing date nights, all those great things. Uh, he had met, as I said, Barbara on September 27th, 1968. And uh, they had a daughter, Paula, and George was, was told that he loved all of your activities. He loved to, he loved to go and, uh, and loved you so very, very much. Uh, he worked at a company that uh, warehoused airline food. He was there for 21 years. Uh, then he moved on to the John R. Sanfilippo Company. Uh, where he was there 10 years uh, in management and distribution, and finally at the Staymore Packaging. Uh, as was said, George, pl George played basketball. He was a big basketball fan. He was a drummer in high school. Uh, he loved Frank Sinatra, was his favorite, but he also loved Bobby Darren and Mel Torme. As a drummer, he loved Buddy Rich, Gene Krupa, all the greats of the big band era, and the Bulldogs. He loved being with his family. He loved, I know, uh, as Barbara had mentioned, going to see your dance recitals, Dina, and being there. And he loved Josh seeing you play hockey. And uh, and he was he, he got to be friends with all the other hockey parents and grandparents. And he would cheer not just for Josh, I was told, but he cheered for the other kids on the team. Um, sort of telling of the kind of guy George was, right? It was not just there not just there for his immediate family, but he was there for everyone who was there. When I asked uh, Barbara what legacy George left, she said he was genuine and kind, loving, loving man. Didn't try to impress people. He got up early to get to the office, he had a great sense of humor, he was easy to be with. And he always says, I loved you, pretty princess. That was his term. George had a heart incident at uh, age 66, and he got to live 10 more years. And he got to say goodbye to his family uh, where he died in his own bedroom. Now, 76 years today, because of you know medical uh, advancements, uh, it's considered a, a fairly young man, right? It's not considered an old man. But that he got 76 years on this earth and that you got 53 with him, and that you, Paul, and Dennis, and Dina and Josh uh, got to be with him for so many great years and just to love him is, is a blessing. As Paul said, she was daddy's little girl. He was the coolest dad. He had so many friends, he was so happy. He would and could talk to anybody. He was interested. Come to Josh's hockey games, got to know the parents, he'd cheer for all the kids. And when he went to the Stevenson High School games, where I guess he also knew the coaches, he knew everyone there, they all loved him, they all looked for him in, his, in the same seat that he occupied week after week, year after year. Um, and he would wave to, uh, to Paul and her friends. And you know, to most kids in high school, their dad waves at them, they're with their friends. It's kind of, but it never was that way. You always loved to, for, for your dad to wave at you. And, uh, and your friends always said that he was the coolest guy and the, the nicest guy. And they loved seeing him too. Nicest, sweet man. He'd go to tennis lessons with Josh, dance recitals, as I said, with Dina. He would smile ear to ear. And I'm told that when you were little, Dina, you would play with his hair. 
and he made up dances and uh, and of course you worked at, at the dance camp near him in Eagle River. So what do we take from George's life? Well, hot dog and with uh, with no ketchup and, and fries and a chocolate shake sounds really good. But also being kind, you know, I think we we underestimate the value of being kind. People have aspirations when they're young to either succeed in a profession or to make some amount of money or to have some kind of a house or drive some kind of a car, and that's all good and well. Uh, but when it comes right down to it, the things that we leave behind are the things that we taught the people we love and the love that we gave them and the love that we received from them. George was an amazing success of a human being. Um, if when we all went, uh, when it was time for us, for us to leave the earth, and we heard the things that were said about George today, we'd all be successful too. So I'm very, very sorry for your loss, and your loss is palpable when I see reactions as I looked around, both of the speakers of Dennis and, and family, but also people who are around you obviously love George dearly. And I'm sorry you won't have him anymore, but you'll have him in here. As we say in our tradition, those whom we love live on in our memory. And they do. You know, the things that George said to you and, uh, and the things that he taught you will be with you forever. So I'll have that for a blessing. George, rest in peace. Zichronole Bracha, may his memory ever be for a blessing. I ask you now as you are able to please rise for Kamali Rachamim, the memorial prayer. Shem <laughs> God filled with compassion whose loving presence ever surrounds us bring final rest to the soul of George Kerman who has returned to his source. May the memory of his life shine forth like the brilliance of the skies above as it brightens our own lives even now. May you who are the source of all compassion shelter him beneath the protection of your wings and bind his soul among the living that he may rest in peace and let us say Amen. I'll recite together uh, Mourner's Kaddish, a prayer that mentions nothing of death but has words like Chaim, life, shalom, peace. Yitkadal v'yitkadash sheme rabba Be'alma divrach v'utei v'emnich malchutei V'chaye chon v'yomei chon v'chaye d'chol b'it Yisrael V'agala v'vizman kari v'mru amen Yehei sheme rabba mevarach l'olam ol'almei ol'maya Yitparach v'yishtabach v'yitpa'al v'tromam v'yitnase V'yithadar v'yitale v'yithalal sheme d'kudsha v'rechu L'ela min kol v'rchata v'shirata T'ushpechata v'nechamata d'amiran b'alma v'nru amen Yehei shlama rabba min shemaya V'chaim alenu v'al kol Yisrael v'nru amen Osa shalom b'nru amav 
הוא יעשה שלום עלינו ועל כל ישראל ועל כל יושבי תבל יאמרו אמן. May the one who makes peace make peace for us and for all Israel and for all who dwell on earth and we say Amen. Please be seated. comes but the earth remains forever the sun rises the sun sets and glides back to where it rises again southward blowing turning northward ever turning blows the wind on its rounds the wind returns all streams flow into the sea but the sea is never full to the place from which they flow though they flow back again
And so now uh, I will invite starting with the, the family uh, of those people who would like to participate in the act of burial. It really is one of the highest acts we can perform because it, uh, it is not repaid. And traditionally we shovel three shovelfuls of earth, uh, not passing the shovel from person to person, but returning the shovel into the earth after you've you know, deposited your three uh, three shovels. So I'll invite the family at this time to, to come up. Come around and use both sides. Want me to hold your purse, ma'am? Yes. <laughs>
two since we start the service. One more here about the road and one on this one. That's why of course. One the Porsche and Tim went on maybe to make sure drive home. Speak these words to the mourners. May God console you with all who mourn in Zion and Jerusalem. And now we go forth in peace to life. This does conclude the services. For those of you online, you can certainly express your personal condolences to the Kerman family at chicagojewishfunerals.com or on legacy.com. Take care.